And I may purify this earthly paradise for your great return. Hello guys, welcome back to Beyond the Realms, and I apologize for not being in my uh, normal movie room, um, but it's late at night, uh, I'm in my regular bedroom, I just finished watching Crossbear, and I'm going to talk about this one here for a little bit. Um, this is a film I'd heard, uh, you know, a few things about that it was worth checking out, and I found it at uh, the Days of the Dead convention. And, you know, I figured I would go ahead and give it a chance, you know, see what it was all about. You know, they had a booth set up there with this, and then they um, were also premiering um, their new film, The Cemetery. Well, director, uh, what's his name here? Adam Albrandt, which he, I think he wrote, direct, shot, produced, edited, did basically one-man operation in this as far as all that stuff goes, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, his new film, Cemetery, um, was playing there, and I really wanted to see it because the trailer looks awesome. Um, but this is the film that came before that, and to get to it, it tells the story of two strippers by the name of Heather and Bunny. Um, they want to get away from this lifestyle. They want to go um, to Greece, uh, these Greek islands, and you know live out their life together away from all the the madness and craziness of the stripping world. So, uh, they devise a plan. Their boss, which is a dickhead to be uh, nice about it, <laughs> he wants them, he's also a uh, drug dealer on the side. He deals cocaine. And he wants them to go and make a deal for him. And, uh, you know, get the money for him and all that stuff. So they so they look at this as a way out. You know, they, they think, you know, hell, we could get this money and you know we could take off on this you know new life that we want well when they get there um, the crossbearer here which is a uh, religious fanatic maniac who is out to rid the world of sin to cleanse the world um, he's just completely a, a lunatic and uh, he is at this place where the drug deal is supposed to go down so as you can of course guess um, things don't go well for uh, Heather and Bunny. Um, but yeah, guys, um, the film, it runs you know right around 90 minutes or so. Uh, but right away, you know, one thing I have to say about this film that I did not like that really caught my attention right away is that they showed the killer way too quick in this. I mean, like within the first five minutes you're seeing, you know, not just the killer in the shadows or anything, you're seeing full on the killer. And, you know, to me, it, it just really squashed all uh, potential suspense elements to the killer. Like, you know, when you can see him that quick, uh, you know, it, it just, you, you, you're ruining the tension. And, I, and that's one thing I think right out of the gate, I was like, wow, you know, I can't believe they showed him that quick. And I was warned of this by Headbanger from Horror's Ball. Uh, he said, you know, it was one thing that was bad about this, and, and I could see that. I mean, that is one downside of this film. Now, I'm not getting the, I hate to get this started on a bad foot because it's not all bad, certainly not. Um, I liked how despite the killer having this mask on, which is sort of like Jason Voorhees, you know, Friday the 13th Part 2, but it's a little bit different because it's like kind of wrapped, almost like a, a ninja mask or something around the throat. Um, and I like, besides having the mask on, he wasn't a silent killer. He talked, and as the film went on, he talked more and more. Um, I did like that element of him. Um, you know, there's some vicious kills in this film. I did like that element to it also. He uses this hammer quite frequently. Not all the time. He also uses a gun at certain points in this film, which I thought was interesting because usually, you know, killers like this will only use, you know, just primitive weapons or tools, you know, but he actually used a gun in, in, in a scene. Um, but some of the hammer kills were very, very violent, especially this one where 
um, involving a man and a woman both. Um, and I mean, he just pummels, just bam, bam, bam. And it's not just with the head. He also uses the claw. There's one scene in particular that's very violent where that claw goes right through the hand and it comes out the other side just fucking brutal, man. Um, but yeah, good gore in this film. Um, I did like all that. It was shot very beautifully, very competently. Um, it looked gorgeous. It, it really did have a very gorgeous look to it. Um, the editing at times was, it, it was, it could have been a little bit better in certain spots. Some of the action scenes or some of the kill scenes, um, it's not that they were, it was hard to tell what was going on, but I just feel like it could have been edited slightly better um, than what it was, but still nothing that's, you know, hampers the film or makes it to where, you know, it's like, oh God, it's unwatchable. It's nothing like that at all. Um, it, it, but overall, just very well, uh, competently shot. Um, and there is one line in this film that I have to mention. Um, uh, one of the guys, I won't mention who it is or when this happens or anything, but there is a line in this where a guy says, he says, yo, fuck face, you just killed my steady pussy. <laughs> You know, he didn't say girlfriend or no, you just killed her. You know, you killed my steady pussy. <laughs> and and speaking of that, there is tons of nudity in this. Uh, copious amounts of breasts and girl-on-girl -girl action and sex scenes. Um, you know, and I, and I realize, you know, there's a lot of people out there that really like that stuff. And there's also people who would say that, you know, that's a cheap plot device. Like my wife, she does not like stuff like that. She says that that is, you know, filling in the holes for, um, you know, not having good uh, plot devices, good story. And to an extent, I could see that. But, you know, also I kind of liked that it had that. I mean, of course, you know, I'm a guy. <laughs> of course I'm going to like that stuff. But also I liked it because this killer is supposed to be like a religious fanatic maniac killer that's, you know, on the loose to cleanse the world for God, you know, and even has a scripture at the beginning of the movie from, from the book of Matthew um, talking about, I'll come to bring, bring peace, I come to uh, divide, and I can't remember the exact verse, but that's basically what the movie is. But I like that it had this, you know, overly sexed element, this drug element, you know, just this very sinful, sleazy, exploitation type feeling to it. You know, because of, you know, what it was about, this killer killing for God. So I did like that. Um, I did not get to check out the special features yet. Actually, I'm going to tonight. Um, as I'm falling asleep, I'm going to put this in and, and watch some of these features. But it does have one here, Two Weeks in Hell, The Making of Crossbearer, a two-and-a-half-hour making of featurette. That is awesome. You don't see that a whole lot. You know, with very low budget independent films having a, that long of a making of featurette, and I can't wait to check that out um, because you know the setting for this film is like a warehouse. It's a dirty, dingy, dark warehouse. Um, so I want to see how they did some of the stuff because even though it was very dark and dingy and all this stuff, the lighting was really awesome in it. And that's like I mean, like it I mean it was really shot very well and competently. And you know that's not always easy to do when it comes to you know films of you know this budget and being able to pull off those shots where things just don't get so murky you can't see it but you can see everything in all of these really dark shots so yeah I, I commend all everybody that made this film um it does also have the trailer for the cemetery which i highly recommend checking out i cannot wait cannot wait to see that film um but as far as the acting goes um it, you know, it, it was decent. Um, it was great to decent, I should say, because uh, the lead actor in it, um, damn, what was it? Natalie Jean, I thought that she was fantastic. I thought she did very, very well. She was wonderfully cast as the lead because she, she's definitely the highest talent of the film. Um, there's no question there. I'm going to try to look this up here on uh, IMDb to get some better names. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Natalie Jean is Heather. And then you had uh, uh, Victoria DePaul as Victoria. She was kind of the one that was leading the group in to uh, have this drug deal. She was okay. Uh, Casey Marie as Bunny. I thought she did good, too. You know, is that was Heather's girlfriend. She did pretty good. Uh, the only one that, I did, that really just, you know... A lot of the acting is just so-so, very average, maybe a little below average, but the only one that I, I thought really didn't work in this, to be honest with you, is uh, Heather and Bunny's boss. He was just so over the top. It kind of reminded me 
of the guy from uh, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, the uh, TV salesman, how he's just really over the top, like, ah, you know, just fucking assholes, motherfuckers, and he was kind of like that, but just not in a good way. It was just too much over the top and just didn't work. He was really like the only one I thought that was like that though. But overall guys, Crossbear is definitely worth checking out if you're into slasher films, independent films that are very well shot, very well put together overall, and uh, you know, just worth your money. So I'm going to give Crossbear a 7 out of 10 and I'm going to recommend checking this out guys. They do have a Facebook page. Um, it does look like there's a website. I'm not sure I can see the girl signed it on the back here, and I can't really see the website. Uh, adversaryfilms.com is what it looks like, but don't quote me on that. Yes, it is adversary, adversaryfilms.com. So check them out, guys. Support this film. Pick it up. That is Crossbear. Thanks for watching Beyond the Realms, guys. Have a good one.